What's going on guys? Petey here. Today we're going to be going over uh, tips and tricks. Some tips and tricks that I've asked around about and people said they'd like to know. So we're going to go into them. Starting with our first one. This one I actually just learned from Sundrop from Guns For Hire. Shout out to him. So this has to deal with the scout. I'm sure many of you guys know this already, but as we can see here, scouts are pretty quick. Move is 3.2 plus 0.96 so roughly 4.1 4.2 is the speed boost there just for moving if you have your unit patrol instead of a normal move you're gonna get a little speed boost there it is wow so your move will go up from 4.2, now we're looking at it's like 5.7, 5.75. So you're gonna get a significant move boost there. Um, I watched this from his video, and he actually has six move on his scout aircrafts. So I think his are a little more upgraded than mine, and his are faster than jets. So keep this in mind if you're ever running a scout army and you need to get somewhere quick. The only thing with this is they're gonna patrol. So as you can see, this guy's still moving that same direction. Once they end the patrol, they're gonna turn back around and just keep repeating that little patrol that you set for them, just like that. So once they get to their end position, you have to watch them, and then you can just move out, and you'll be good. All right, our second tip has to deal with specifically running airmen. Um, I guess this can be useful for all different classes, but it's very good for airmen um, for the reason I'll tell you. So it has to deal with your military zones. So for a while, I always wondered why people rush military zones as there's two turrets and a munitions factory next to it. And pushing in early game against two turrets is kind of silly when you have to push a city. That's at least what I thought. Well, <clears throat> these military zones, they are really good for getting your munitions up as fast as you can. Um, so for example, say you're going to 10, you need to get a level 10 city so that way you can produce bombers with your munitions factory go back to my capital right so normally this will take to get to level 8 it's 50,000 uh, cash and then level 9 is 100,000 level 10 is 200,000 if you capture a military zone it's way cheaper to produce those munition factory upgrades and to upgrade your military zone in general so that's one of the key most important things that I actually just learned um, shout out to DT let me not mess up your name. DTSRS from Lone Wolves. Uh, badass dude. He, he pointed that out for me. So keep that in mind whenever you're trying to run airmen and get, or even just try to get up to artillery or anything like that. That's a really good, uh, quick way to upgrade your tech and not have to save up a bunch of cash. All right. Our next thing is going into battle score. So obviously we have our battle level. We're level 29. So this is talking about easy ways to upgrade your battle score. Of course, you can just continuously attack people and take cities over and over, even if you don't have flags, let your allies cap them and progress your battle score that way. But there are faster ways to do it. I actually just killed off a, a tiger tank here, a Waffen SS tiger, tiger tank. Um, they're level four and they give you a lot higher XP than a normal player's tiger tank would. Here's another one. So you can just look on the map. These start to spawn randomly throughout the map. But the biggest one would be, where did this thing go? It would be taking out the Waffen headquarters. So as you can see, one of our teammates already did that. He just captured these three points, let his turrets kill off all the other troops. And let's see what his battle score is right now. Level 25. This isn't the guy that killed it off. Um, I actually watched this guy kill it off. It was crusty. I don't know why this guy captured the zones. But anyways, he captured it off and he got to level 34 battle level. I've been grinding uh, battle score this entire battlefield. I wasn't taking any Waffen. And this dude literally passed me by. You can see our battle score difference and then his battle level. So the battle level is really important because he's got five more flags than me. And he's also got... Uh, 10 more troops on the field than I do so he's in a much better position with his army and so on and so forth 
because of that. And the last and final way of how you can uh, gain your battle score is you can make a navy. Now this is kind of based on preference, but I did this before and I did this battlefield actually, that's how I'm almost at 30 now. So basically you make a navy. I like to make these uh, North Carolina battleships, I believe they're called. North Carolina battleships, they have 300 attack range and you can out tur you can outrange turrets. You outrange their sight, like for uh, for ports and stuff like that. So you make a couple battleships and then the Cleveland Cruiser. This has 250 attack range, but it's got 300 sight. This one's only got 200 sight. So you got to run them together. This also will help you against bombers or any air that's in the sky. So with my navy, I recommend going five battleships, three cruisers. But you can switch it up as you see fit. And what you'll do is you'll literally just click on your ships and you can just attack move them across the coast to like right there and anything they can hit on the way they're just going to start blowing up as you can see i did that on this battlefield and literally everything is blown up except for that but i just went down took it all the way down to the bottom of the map touched all these ports blew them up except for that one and just kind of paved a path and those things they just go Every hour I would check on them and just give them a new target and they would just blow all these up and I got a ton of XP for it. So your battle level is very important, like I said, for flags and for making bigger armies. Our next thing we'll talk about is trading in the commercial center. This is something that will help you in the beginning of the field. So commercial centers, if, you, if you're in a league, you'll try to rush this to five as soon as you can so you can start getting uh, gig transports and stuff like that. But if you're running a specialty class and you're running out of rubber or even oil, this is really good to utilize early game. It's not great throughout the entire game because these resources start to get expensive, like 2,400 steel for 3,000 cash. It's not really a good deal. Um, and then it's like 750 rubber for oil. These come in randomly and each city has its own trade market. So check all of your cities if you're looking for a specific thing such as oil. And then as well you can also get trade decrees and you can refresh these even though they refresh every hour. You can just keep refreshing and find the trade you're looking for. Our next thing we're going to be talking about is turrets, sniper towers, um, placement of these around your cities and then an officer that offers a great bonus. So this is something that has been bugging me. As you guys know, I run tanker a lot of the time and I use my stugs and it's attack range to out, to not get shot and just let my stugs. Like I'll have a group of 20 stugs right here and say these are all enemies. I could just click them right here, um, put a scout plane here, scout plane here, scout plane here. So that way they can see the, the sniper towers and attack move them all the way up to here. And they'll just, and then just leave my computer AFK or leave my phone. And they'll just push through, kill everything, not, and they won't get hit a single time. So what I've been running into lately is that a lot of people, a lot of high level players, they're getting their turrets upgraded and they're upgrading their sniper towers by uh, getting different officers. So the officer that I know of that can help with that is this guy, Theodore Schwer, something. So he has a plus 100 attack range to all sniper towers and turrets. And then also if you check this into your league city, uh, you're going to get a, a plus 30 attack range for everybody in your league. So this is a pretty good officer and he, I think he's only $10, $15, so it's not bad. But what that does, as you can see, this is my capital city. I have my turrets, they're pretty high level, we're pushing to 10 right now and then all of my towers are facing towards my city. So what that makes it is if somebody drops here, 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 here looks like it might be safe um, just because of the city design. But if someone drops their troops in any one of those areas, I'm going to have multiple towers shooting at them as well. These things have 280 attack range. That's almost as much as a level 5 turret. So they'll be able to snipe at these guys too and do some good damage. All right, finally, the last one I'm gonna go over, we're gonna do a few more of these videos um, as, we, as I get more suggestions for them. But the last thing is doing command cues. 
So the biggest thing that I ran into when when starting this game was running air troops and then forgetting that they're in the sky or falling asleep or something like that and them crashing and I wake up and my whole army's dead. So one thing that you can do is you can push they're gonna go attack here. Okay they'll bomb these sniper towers. Then you can set up commands and cues. So right here at the bottom you can see edit commands. So what this is gonna do I'm already attacking, that queue is already set, that, that action. So now after they get done attacking that, I want them to move over here. You can see that my line is still there to attack. I'm going to move here afterwards. And then I want them to enter the Air Force Base once they're done. So now the action, they're going to go over there, bomb this stuff, coming back to the city, and land in the Air Force Base. This is also really important, like I was talking about for the Stugs. Um, in my example So I can take my stugs put a scout here a scout here a scout here a scout here and a scout here and I can just Wrap them all the way around like I can make them attack here all the way up here and Then make them attack here and then have them enter back into my army base and then I can go idle It's not a hundred percent recommended. I would only do it in a safe area um, that you know that you're not going to get bombed or blown up while you're offline. Um, with that said, make sure your push notifications are on. They're found here in your settings. Push notifications, you can turn all these on and they'll notify your phone. And then make sure your phone notification settings are on. And that'll tell you if your army is being attacked, it'll let you know who's attacking you, when. And it should be a couple seconds after you actually get attacked. There's a little bit of lag on it, but you might be able to save your army by the time you get back. But be careful with it. It's a really good tactic if you're not the type of person who likes to stare at your phone for eight hours and you want to just set a couple actions and then put down your phone and make dinner or whatever, whatever you're doing. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. More coming soon. If you liked it, um, leave a like so I know. If you have any suggestions of your own, uh, go ahead and put it in the comments and I'll include that in the next video. I appreciate it, guys. Later.